This video will cover the word problems that are in section 6.6. .6. These are rational equation word problems. First one deals with a proportion, and the reason we know this is a proportion is this right here, at this rate. This problem says, an Arabian camel can travel 20 miles in 8 hours. At this rate, how far can the camel travel in 10 hours? What we're doing here is making a comparison of miles to hours. Anytime you set up a proportion, I think it's a good idea to write down what I call a model. It's just going to be what you're going to follow when you fill in these numbers. On a proportion, sometimes it's very easy to get confused and put a number in the top when it should be in the bottom and vice versa. But if you have a model right here, like a road map, then you know exactly where to put things. So that's my model. Then I'm going to set up two separate fractions dealing with these number situations. We've got 20 miles in 8 hours. Because my model has miles on the top, I put 20 on the top, I put 8 on the bottom. My model is miles over hours. It could easily have been hours over miles, in which case this is 8 over 20. That's why it's a good idea to write this model down. I come over to the next situation, how far can the camel travel in 10 hours? Because we've got the word hours written on the bottom, I know to put the 10 in the bottom. Sometimes students set up proportions just as first number, second number, third number, and they always put the X on the bottom, and that's not always the case. If you've got a model, then you're going to know where things go. How far, that's talking about the distance, and that's my X. You should remember that if you want to solve a proportion, which is just one fraction equal to one fraction, all you have to do is cross multiply. So if I cross multiply here, 8 times x is 8x. Cross multiply here, 20 times 10 is 200. Solve by dividing both sides by 8, and we get 25. And the unit that goes on that 25, because x was in the top, the unit is miles. So that camel can go 25 miles in 10 hours. One other comment here that is a common mistake. You cannot reduce across an equal sign. That equal sign is just telling me this fraction equals this fraction. You cannot take a 10 out of both of those. If you had 20 over 8 times x over 10, then this is where you could do a little bit of canceling. But you cannot cancel across an equal sign. That's a common mistake. Next one, in 2010, 185 out of every 200 Marine personnel were men. If there were 202,000 total Marine personnel in 2010, estimate the number of men, and then round your answer to the nearest whole number. We have to think about what we're comparing here. We know that men is going to be part of the situation, and the other word we're going to use is this whole Marine personnel, in other words, the total amount of Marines. So here's your model, men over total Marines. So set up your two fractions and start filling in. 185 out of every 200 Marine personnel were men. That means that 185 refers to the men. The 200 refers to the total number. Then we've got this total number, and that's going to go on the bottom because that's where our total goes. And what we're looking for is the number of men. That's our x that goes on the top. We have a proportion set up, a fraction equal to a fraction. All you have to do is cross multiply. 200 times x gives us 200x. 185 times this 200,000 is 37451585. Simple equation, divide both sides by 200. And x is 187257.925. This is asking me to round to the nearest whole number, which means this right here needs to be my last number. This 9 right here is big enough to make this round up, so this becomes 187258. So we're estimating the number of men in the Marines was this 187,258. Different kind of word problem that's in this section is on what is just considered work problems. A work problem deals with any type of job. It doesn't matter. This happens to be word processing a research paper. It can be raking the leaves, painting the house, cleaning the pool, filling the pool. Any kind of job is a work problem. And this setup I'm going to show you is not the one in the book, but it's a pretty nifty little setup that can be used on any of these work problems, and it's this idea. We're going to have two separate fractions. One of these fractions is going to be for this guy, Alan, and one of the fractions is going to be for Steve.
person has an alone time and what that refers to is how long it would take them to do the particular job alone. Then where's this together time? The together is how long these guys work together to finish the job. So Alan can word process a research paper in six hours. His alone time, which is his denominator, is six. It takes Steve 12 hours to do the same job alone. So there's the denominator for Steve's fraction. How long would it take them to finish the typing if they work together? They're working the exact same amount of time together, and we're going to call that x equals 1. This little setup is always equal to 1, and what 1 refers to is the total job. No matter what the total job is, it's always equal to 1. Fractions, so we need to clear out the denominators. We're going to multiply both sides by the common denominator, which is 12. So 6 will cancel into 12 two times, which makes 2x. Over here, 12 totally cancels with 12 and just gives me x. Don't forget to multiply on the right side. 12 times 1 equals 12. Finish the equation. That's 3x equals 12. Divide both sides by 3. And x is going to be 4 hours. And the reason the units are hours is because the unit in the problem was hours. And you can check this. This little scenario works. Put this 4 in for the x. You're looking at 4 over 6 plus 4 over 12. Does that really equal 1? And the answer is yes, because 4 over 6 reduces to 2 thirds. 4 over 12 reduces to 1 third, which does equal 1. So it does check. Similar problem. Pipe A takes 10 hours to fill the pool. Pipe B takes 12 and pipe C takes 8. We're talking about three different pipes filling the pool, which is like three different people working together. So we're going to need a fraction setup that has three separate fractions. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did on the other one. Pipe A takes 10 hours, meaning 10 hours alone. Pipe B takes 12. Pipe C takes 8. They are going to work together the whole time. So each of these numerators is x. I have fractions. I need to clear out the fractions by multiplying by the common denominator. And the least common denominator happens to be 120. If you have a hard time coming up with a common denominator, you can just multiply the denominators together. You could do 10 times 12 times 8, which is 960. You could use that as your common denominator. It's bigger than necessary, but it doesn't matter. You have a calculator, you can use the bigger number. But 120 is the least common denominator. And that means I need to multiply that 120 times this, this, and this, and this. So I've got some reducing to do here. 10 goes into 120 12 times. So this is 12x. 12 goes into 120 10 times. So this is 10x. 8 goes into 120 15 times. So this is 15x. And don't forget to multiply on the other side. 120 times 1 is 120. So by multiplying by 120, we've made the fractions go away, and we have a reasonable equation to solve. Add up these x's is 37x equals 120. Divide both sides by 37. This doesn't come out even, but that's OK. It's approximately 3.2 hours. You may remember from high school, there are variations on these work problems where maybe one person starts and then the next person joins them, or they start together and one guy quits. This together and alone thing can still be used for those kind of problems. But the only ones we have to deal with in this book are these basic setups like this. That covers the first couple word problems out of 6.6. Six. Watch the video part two for the rate, time, and distance problems.